All right, here we are in the world of Night Stalker. We got our gun. The stalking is really slow. Oh my god! Don't kill me! I can't get in there! <laughs> I got killed! Instantly! Did I even last five seconds? Welcome back to another episode of Saturday Afternoon Gaming. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're checking out Night Stalker. Now, Night Stalker, um, some of you may actually remember, was recommended to me back in December when I was setting up my fan extravaganza, and it unfortunately did not get enough votes to win its category. It came in, it was actually tied for second, so I mean, like, a lot of people had some love for Night Stalker. And I said back when I announced the results of my fan extravaganza that now that I knew about Night Stalker um, and Toy Commander uh, and various other games as well, that I might try and get to them at some point. And today is the day for Night Stalker. I had the itch. I looked it up again and I thought, yeah, I want to play that. So today we're going to be checking out Night Stalker. Now, Night Stalker is an Intellivision game. And in television is interesting because it's a very old system, uh, you know, the same era as like Atari and the Magnavox Odyssey and stuff. And so you think for an old system, like for a lot of us, I think old systems like Atari, they have like one button. So how hard are they to figure out? But in television is interesting because it actually has a very complicated uh, controller. Not only does it not have a joystick, it has instead sort of a, a circle that you press, which is, it's really bad, actually. It doesn't work super well. Um, the D-pad is way better than the Intellivision disc. But it's, it's still, like, for those of you who know me, I love weird old controllers, and I actually love using an Intellivision controller because I love the disc because it's so unique. Um, but it also had a couple of buttons on the side, and then it has like a number pad, and you would actually insert inserts into this number pad, um, and it would the numbers would do things uh, differently on different games. So you had something like, was that like eleven buttons plus a directional pad, way more than the Atari. So even though Intellivision is uh, an older game like the Atari. Um, for Intellivision games, I have learned you can't just jump into them and try and figure them out. We have to start with the instructions. So today we're going to take a look at the instructions for a little bit, and then we'll hop into the game together, uh, taking what we have learned from the instructions and trying to uh, actually uh, play the game. Um, I will also say that uh, I will cop to the fact that I'm uh, not going to be playing this with an original Intellivision controller. Um, I'm just going to be using, uh, you know, a, a, a Super Nintendo controller basically connected to my computer. Um, here's one little fun fact before we actually hop into the game here today, guys. I moved recently. And in order to move, I had to box up my entire retro gaming setup. And so all of my systems, everything are in boxes and everything's packed up. And all my sophisticated recording setup that would allow me to turn on everything from a PS3 to an N64 to an NES and just instantly uh, things would route properly to like my Elgato and things would get recorded and all that. All of that has been disassembled. I am dreading having to put it back together and I can't even put it back together right now. I'm kind of in a temporary space. So I don't even have my Intellivision handy to play this on. I mean, I have an Intellivision flashback, but I don't even have that handy and out of a box ready to play. That's why I'm not using a real Intellivision controller today. So we are playing this on an emulator, on a PC, um, and for my for the next little bit, uh, I'll probably, well, I have some pre-recorded games from consoles, but uh, I'm going to be surviving mostly on emulators and PCs until, or as I gradually build my setup back up. But yes, I moved recently, so anyway, let's, uh, let's start talking about uh, Night Stalker here. So this game is uh, for one or two players. We'll be playing the solo variant today. Um, other electronic games available from Mattel Electronics. Look for them. G sage advice. <laughs> and printed in Hong Kong. I don't know why I'm scrutinizing this this uh, manual here, but it's it's fun. I find to look through these old manuals. Um, you know, and like just read about the game before we hop in. So your man is trapped in the maze. Robots relentlessly track him down. Keep him away from spiders and bats. Watch. Watch out for robots. Oh, <laughs> wait. So the enemies are spiders. I assume that's a bat. It looks like a seagull or a dove. 
Um, so you got your spiders, your bats, and robots. Why not? I don't know. Go go the full uh full horror genre uh, cliche. Why not? Um, your key to survival is to destroy them before they get the man. I like how your character is just man. Your man. Rack up as many points as you can. It's against them to the end. That sounds kind of like the Steve Rogers line that helps bring uh, the Winter Soldier back from the brink. Where he's like, I'm, I'm with you to the end of the line, Bucky. Uh, slide the Night Stalker overlays into the hand controller frame so they cover the keypad. See, here's what I was talking about. So the keypads allow you to shoot up, left, right, or down. There's also, you know, a, a button here and a button here and a button here and here. Um, but those aren't used in gameplay. This actually maps really nicely onto the Super Nintendo controller I'm using because move the man is my D-pad, and then I have, uh, you know, Y, X, A, and B is my directional buttons. So um, this actually works very well for what I'm doing here today. Anyway, okay, so we understand the controls. Let's uh, take a look here. At, to begin the game, press Reset. Um, then you see the Night Stalker title screen. Now we can choose our speeds, pressing one, two, or three. And disc for the fastest speed. Oh. Oh, yeah. I forgot the, the disc on the Intellivision not only had a D-pad, but you could even press it down, which is actually pretty advanced. Like uh, PS3 controllers and PS4 controllers, you can use the analog stick and press the analog stick in for like a hidden button. But the Intellivision was doing this way back in like 82. It's pretty crazy. Game begins immediately, immediately with the man inside the center bunker. His loaded weapon is lying in the maze. is flashing. The man must leave the bunker and land on the weapon to pick it up. Press a disc on your controller to move the man through the maze. Okay, and then we, we can shoot in different directions. Rules of the maze. The bunker. There is only one safe place for man to hide, and that's inside the bunker, in the center of the maze. When man is inside bunker, spiders and bats cannot bite man. And the robot bullets will not harm man until the black robot appears. See page seven. Uh oh. Man. You start off with six mans. Each man can run and shoot, but he cannot do both at once. After one man is shot, the next man appears inside the bunker, and the number of mans you have left shows up on the screen. Each time you rack up 10,000 points, you get another man. When your last man is downed by robot, game is over. I don't know why I'm reading like a caveman, but it just seems appropriate. I, I'm not going to stop. When man's main defense uh, is... Uh, wait. Man's main defense in the creature-infested maze is his loaded weapon. Uh, each weapon holds six shots. The, and will drop bats, spiders, and robots. Like how it says drop. It doesn't say kill or destroy. It says it's going to drop them, yo. We're going to drop you, sucker. Timer shots carefully. You cannot, uh, once you fire, you cannot shoot again until the bullet disappears from the screen. Odd mechanic for a gun. Imagine there was a gun like that. After you shoot, you have to wait for it to hit something before you could shoot again. Well, I guess in real life, bullets go really fast, so it re you probably wouldn't notice if that was the case. Anyway, uh, man is out of bullets when you see the weapon flash on the screen. Man must pick up and land on weapon, blah, blah, blah. Spiders. A single menacing spider creeps through the maze, ready to bite man whenever they come into contact. Once man is bitten, he falls down, paralyzed for a few seconds. When he, when he down, he cannot fire a weapon or run. He vulnerable to robot attack. To avoid being bitten, fire off a shot. If it hits spider, he vanishes. But another quickly appears in the spider's web. Okay, so spider's infinite. Two bats uh, will make their way through the maze. Either bat can bite the man when they come into contact. Man will fall down. Paralyzed. He cannot shoot. Okay. So it sounds like a lot of the enemies just paralyze me. So what kills me? Um, after you shoot bad, the bat is hit by robot fire is replaced by another. Okay, so bats and spiders spawn infinitely. The game changes once you score over 5,000 points. Now when the robot fire or your shot hits a bat... Gray robot takes its place. If both baskets hit, you'll have three robots and no... Okay, I don't understand what that's talking about. The man's most persistent enemy is robot. Of course it is. Man versus robot. In the course of the game, you will encounter five different types. As your score gets higher, the robots become more and more sophisticated. It's like uh, in The Incredibles. Every time Mr. Incredible beat a robot, Syndrome would build a more advanced robot. Each new robot has all the characteristics of the previous robot, plus new features. 
All robots fire at man. They have unlimited ammunition. Their shots are the same as man's. Only one bullet uh, shows on the screen at a time. When man's bullet hits a robot, he explodes. See, that's just ambiguous writing. Does man explode or does... I assume robot. But that's, that's, see, that's, that's an example of ambiguous writing. Who's the he in this sentence? Then quickly, another robot replaces him. Robots always enter the maze of the lower left. Okay, so... I guess there's no levels in this. So the bats and the spiders and robots will spawn infinitely. And there's no levels. You just kind of survive for as long as you can. Um, here are the different robots. This robot is slow. Blue robot, he's more determined to track man. The white robot aggressively seeks out the man. Oh, and he has shields. And black robot, he has advanced power. He's capable of firing white energy bolts. Ooh, that absorbs man's bullets. Once the bunker is gone, there is no safe place for man to hide. The man will be in trouble if that scenario ever, if we ever get to that point. Invisible robot. Jeez, he's the ultimate aggressor. It's a sneak attack. His bullets are visible. That's your only clue about where he is. Okay, then we have some information about scoring, strategy tips. Here's how you hold the controller, just so you know. Place one hand on the disc and the other on the keypad, ready to move the man. <laughs> that, I like how that's a strategy. They're like, pro tip, hold the controller this way. All right, once an aggressive robot is after the man, lay in wait at corners and intersections. So they're just giving the game away here. For the white and black invisible robots, it's, your, it's helpful to count on your bullets. Try to use your last bolt to blast the robot. Give you some time to run and pick up the weapon. Oh. Huh. Knock off sleeping. That's actually an interesting tip. You want to like specifically kill the robot with your last bullet. So then when the robot's respawning, you can go get the next gun. That's actually a really good strategy. I wouldn't have thought of that. They really are giving it away in, uh, in this little guide here. All right, enough talking. Let's go ahead and give this game a shot. All right, here we are in the world of Night Stalker. We got our gun. The stalking is really slow. Oh my god. Don't kill me. I can't get in there. <laughs> I got killed instantly. Okay, hold on. And I'm also playing the game on really slow. Um, is there a way to speed this up a bit? Oh my god. Hold on. I gotta mess with the volume here. It's kind of loud on my TV. There we go. All right, I guess we'll try this first round on slow. But I would like to speed it up at some point. Oh, nice try, robot. Nice. Oh, we don't even have a gun. Oh, God, run. <laughs> I was waiting for him to come around the corner. I'm like, we're going to blast him. And he got us. All right, two for two. Uh, all right, here's the gun. We're finally going to be armed. We can finally kill something. Oh, man, that robot's going nuts trying to kill us. Jeez. So this is what I would consider kind of a scary game. Uh, like the sort of there's no music in this game. It's just sort of like atmospheric Like you kind of hear like your heart heart pumping in the background Like it's kind of spooky actually like it kind of reminds me of like a bad dream. Oh, we killed a robot. Yo Oh, we killed a bat We are icing them left and right. Maybe I do want to play this on slow speed it Gives me a chance to actually survive Get out of here spider. Oh, we missed him Let's do this. Boom. Oh, you're done, robot. Oh, the spider got in the way. Oh, we missed the robot. Oh, he is sneaky. Robot is sneaky, eh? Boom. We got you, robot. All right, this is pretty This is pretty fun. It's cool shooting mechanics. Oh, my God. Can we outrun a bullet? No, we can't. Get up in there. Oh, my God. We barely survived. Oh, no. Oh, no. Give me the bat. You're giving me the gun. Oh no, the bat bit me. I'm paralyzed. I can't move. He's slowly passing out. All right, he's alive again. We'll have to figure out how to play this game on a faster speed. But I feel like playing on this low speed is really a good intro for me because uh, on a higher speed, I'd probably mess this up. But yeah, the, the, so this game would be out like in the era of like Space Invaders and stuff. And like, this is kind of like Pac-Man with a gun. It's like if Pac-Man was allowed to get more aggressive and he, not just like eat the ghost, but he's like just straight up gonna like down them with a pistol. Dirty Harry style. Bam! Alright, we're getting the hang of it. I do like that it combines shooting mechanics with like uh, Pac-Man style maze stuff. 
That's actually really cool. I don't think I've seen a game before that's sort of like a gun version of Pac-Man. Um, boom! Oh! Double kill! I got him and he got me. Well done, robot. You earned that kill. Alright, oh god. I'm gonna stay in my little safety bunker in the center here. So here's a fun fact about this game. It was ported to other systems. Also, okay, bonus fun fact before we even get to the fun fun fact. The bonus fun fact is that I don't think this game ever came out in arcades. I could be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure this was an Intellivision game. Uh, which is, you know, not, not like, unheard of. But I do kind of feel like most games that we play from this era were in arcades and then they were ported to home consoles. So to play a game that was, like, specifically made for home consoles and wasn't just an arcade port, I feel like is kind of unique, actually. Um, again, it's not like it was unheard of. Probably many games we have played on this channel, even, are in the category of having existed only on a console and not been an arcade port. Um, but I guess I just never thought of it before. Like, not, so many of these old games that are on, like, you know, there's... Because this was ported to, like, Atari and Apple II and Commodore and Intellivision. Like, there's so many... Like, look up any old arcade game, and it's like, yeah, it came out in the arcades, and two years later it was ported to uh, Amiga, Amstrad CPC, BBC Micro, Commodore 64, Intellivision, Atari, Apple II. You know, like, it, there's a list of common commonly ported computers and consoles back in the day and like every game that was ported from the arcades ended up on like every single one <laughs> you know it's just sort of the way it worked but nice try robot boom boom oh double kill i, I need the halo announcer like double kill triple kill kilimanjaro oh god we got shot in the back <laughs> It sucks when, like, you're running down that long hallway and you see a bullet coming and you know you can't outrun it. You're just done. Um, also, I kind of wish this game did have levels and that each level was a different map because definitely it's kind of... It, like, the map does determine what areas are safe and what are dangerous. So it's like, this would have been really cool if every five robot kills, you played a different map and so it kept mixing up the terrain. That would be really cool. You could even, you know, for programmers back in the day, they didn't have a lot of memory to work with. You could even just procedurally generate maps. They wouldn't even have to be, uh, you know, coded in. You could just manually set the random seed to a certain value, and then you could have an algorithm that would uh, procedurally generate the maps, and you just check to make sure that, like, the first hundred maps look playable, and then that's the seed that you ship the game with. And boom! Gaming Day just solved your memory problem and gave you, like, a hundred different levels. Night Stalker. Anyway, I got distracted from the fun fact I was going to tell you guys about. It's so fun, you guys. It's going to be so fun to hear this fact. <laughs> Set myself up with unrealistic expectations. So the fun fact is that this game was ported to the Atari 2600. Not so fun yet. However, here's the fun part. It was not called Night Stalker. It was called, I have the name here, Dark Cavern. So, I don't know what the deal was, why Mattel decided, you know what, Night Stalker, a little too scary for the Atari 2600 crowd, why don't we call it Dark Cavern? And so, you might you might be looking at this game, you might have been looking at this game being like, that game looks really familiar, it looks like this old game I used to know about called Dark Cavern. And you would be correct, oh, we got a purple robot, boom, we just iced him, let's, let's uh, troll the respawn. Let's be dicks about this. Oh, yeah, eat that, robot. <laughs> this is how you get the score. This is actually, like, so easy. Boom. We just killed four robots. Who's building these robots? They must get really pissed at our lack of, uh... Our lack of sportsmanship here. I don't care. I don't care. This is cheap, but I don't care, man. I bet this is people who have, like, the world record score in this game probably do that. I just found, I just figured out your world record score, world record holder and Night Stalker. What do you think about that? Took me two seconds. Oh God, this is a, this is a gamble. Really need that gun. Okay, we're going to get the gun. We're going to troll the respawn again because we're dicks. You know what? In a life and death uh, battle against robots. Oh God. And bats. I don't care about being cheap or not. 
Also, I kind of feel like the main antagonist that I need to kill is the robot. Like, the bats and stuff are less relevant to me to kill. Like, I haven't been killing any spiders or any bats. And nor do I really feel like I need to. I feel like killing the robots... Like, robots feel like the real villains. The spiders and the bats are just in the environment, you know? They're just hanging out, doing their thing! Oh, well played, robot. Well played. So I guess getting into that little spawn location and cheesing them out is actually harder to do than it seems. Oh, we just got bit by a spider. All right. Well, anyway, I already told you guys that I moved recently, so that's uh, some of my life news to share with you guys. Um, I moved to I, I moved for good reasons. I moved to uh, to a, to a nicer house. So um, it'll probably take me honestly months to get my setup. Oh God, run! back to where it was so as i say you know bear with me a little bit through this transitionary period i'm not going to stop making videos or anything like that and i don't even anticipate any delays or gaps in uploading videos uh but it just is the case that um crap 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 all the robots coming to kill me it just is the case that uh you know i might oh two robots didn't expect that I might be relying more on games I can play on emulators on my computer, because that is, like, that is always the easiest thing to record off of. Um, but I am going to have to start digging some consoles out of uh, boxes and setting them up here and there so that I can continue with the 1001 quest. Because, man, we got, we got, like, 400 and, what, 430 more games to play? Which is actually, like, we're past the halfway point, man. We are past the halfway point. Pretty crazy to think about. Um, anyway, the other, the other sort of news thing that I wanted to mention is uh, that uh, I had this idea that I kicked around on Patreon, and my patrons sort of commented and said they liked the idea. And so it's something I think I'm going to do at some point. Again, because I'm kind of in a transitionary period and stuff, I don't know if it's going to happen like next week, but probably sometime in March is when I'm hoping to set it up. And the idea is basically this. I want to have a, a watch party of The Wizard. You guys know The Wizard, the Fred Savage movie, and he has a, the brother who tries to go to California to be in the Nintendo World Championship Tournament. And I'm like, I'm not going to give any anything away in case you haven't seen it. But here's my idea. Oh man, we're annihilating. We're, we're wiping out a whole race of robots. Here, here's what a watch party is. So what I would like to do, ideally, is have a live stream and just stream the movie and hang out. And I would probably get Jordan and maybe one more guest to come on with me. And we would watch the movie with you guys in real time. And we would chat and joke and have some fun with the movie. And you guys could comment and we could all just watch the movie together. Now, the realities of DMCA modern copyright laws are that I could not stream the movie live to you. Um, not only would uh, I get in trouble with YouTube, you know, I mean, I could get arrested and stuff, although probably I'd just get in trouble with YouTube. Oh, God, robot, you cornered me, you bastard. You're smarter than they look. Um, are we dead yet? We are dead. Okay, let's see if we can do this on a faster mode. I'm going to press three. Three. Okay, here we go. Oh, maybe this was a faster mode. Hard to imagine it going much slower than this, but okay. I mean, I guess I, I did press three, so I tried to put this on the fastest mode. But anyway, hopefully this is still entertaining for you guys. Um, the slower pace actually does give me a chance to uh, talk to you guys about other things. Though. Anyway, so what I am going to do for this watch party, I, I, had a, I had an idea of how to set this up. And basically the way it will work is that sometime in March, and I'll, and I'll make an announcement on my channel, so everyone, you know, I'll give you guys like a week's notice so people can like make plans and put in their calendars and stuff. But I will host a live stream where, you know, Jordan and I and another guest or, or two are going to sit down and we're going to watch The Wizard. And we are going to uh, invite you all to join us on that live stream and get The Wizard queued up in Amazon Prime or whatever, however you've got it, maybe you got it on DVD or whatever. We will pick a starting point. We'll get everyone to sort of get to that point in the movie, and then we'll do a countdown. Five, four, three, two, one, go! And then everyone presses play at the same time. Boom, now everybody's watching the movie. I will also have a 
uh, time code on the live stream so you can see exactly where we are. And we're going to have one more feature where we take occasional sort of freeze frames from the movie and we can put that on the screen and we can sort of be talking about the movie and we can have a freeze frame showing us where we are. So I can't stream you the movie live, but that freeze frame will be updating, you know, every minute or so, every couple of minutes. So you can kind of see where we are in the movie. So the point, if you want to watch the movie with us, if you want to watch it live, you're going to have to get it yourself. Amazon Prime, I think it's on, I don't know if it's on Netflix or not. I haven't checked. If you have it on DVD or you, you know, you bought it on Apple Music or whatever, however you've got it, however you've legally acquired The Wizard, you can sync your copy up and you can watch it live with us. You can comment to us. We'll read your comments. We'll talk to you. We'll talk to each other. Uh, we'll just have fun with the movie. Um, but even if you don't have that, we will have some freeze frames on the screen as we go through the movie. So you can see like where we are, what we're talking about. Um, and even if you're watching it live, I think it's also handy. Like if we see a weird actor and we want to like talk about, oh, this guy's so weird, blah, blah, blah. We can like snap a freeze frame of him and it can be like on the stream. And while we're talking about him, you know exactly who we're talking about, exactly what scene we're talking about. So that's the idea. Um... Yeah, if you guys are interested in joining, you know, it's, I mean, I'm going to do this for sure. So I don't really need people to confirm that they want me to do this. Um, but if you are, if you do like the sounds of that and, you know, you, you're planning on joining, uh, that'd be cool if you just let me know in the comments, just so I have some sense of like, you know, how many people are into this idea. I think it'd be really fun. It's not going to replace any gaming video or anything I would normally release. It'll just be like a bonus live stream event that we do. Um, and you guys are all going to be invited to come watch a movie with us. Maybe on like a Sunday afternoon or like a, a Thursday evening. I don't know. We'll we'll figure out a date. But uh, yeah, that's the other announcement that I had to tell you guys about um, as we were playing through some Night Stalker here. Um, I love this. I love this little cheese that we have found of just like poning robots in the corner there. Trolling the respawn. We brought we brought <laughs> modern griefing to a 1982. Uh, shooter i mean this is this really is sort of like the predecessor to first person shooters i mean you know doom and wolfenstein 3d uh those are the iconic first person shooters that really like defined the genre and really they were they were games just like this they were 2d games um, but they were drawn from the first person perspective so you might have heard doom and wolfenstein 3d called 2.5 d games and that's because they really were, like, at the most basic level, this could be a Doom level. It's just that instead of controlling it from the top down, you're controlling it from the first person. Um, and if you still don't 100% believe me or understand what I'm talking about, there's lots of people, tons of people made really good videos on, like, why Doom isn't actually a 3D game and what it means to be a 2.5D game. So this obviously is a little more primitive than Doom. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to argue with you on that one. I mean, it's obvious. Um, but at the same time, I mean, you, this does really scratch the, the shooter itch. Oh, God, I made a oh, bye, move. The only thing I wish is that your guy could move a little faster. But I think if he did, it would be like way too, way too easy. Um, the atmosphere in this game is pretty cool. It does feel like very horror-ish, like... The fact that you don't have music almost makes this game more intense, just like that sort of thumping heartbeat um, is pretty scary. You're like in a dark maze, like it's a very dark game, you know, it's like at nighttime, boom, double kill. Kilimanjaro, Killionaire. What else does the Halo guy say? Kill straf, kill strosity, kill stravaganza. I forget all the things, but. That was one of the funnest things about Halo multiplayer, I think, is like all the variations of kill that they came up with for the announcer. That was such a brilliant idea. Ugh. I, I love little touches like that. Like Halo would have been a great game no matter what. It had tight shooting mechanics, good weapons. It had a great campaign. It had well-designed levels, fun enemies to kill, and great multiplayer. But they went a little above and beyond and were like, hey, you know what would be cool is if there was an announcer who, like, announced every time you got, like, a bunch of kills in a row. And it's like that just added a little flair. You know, could you have made Halo without that? Absolutely. Is it necessary for Halo to be a good game? Absolutely not. 
but it's like a fun little touch that the developers went above and beyond. I love little things like that in games that just show that the developers were doing their best to jam in as many interesting, cool, and fun mechanics as possible. Oh my god, we got to the shield robots. I honestly didn't think we would be very good at this game. I think I have been trained through years of failure at these old games to just believe I'm bad at old games, but I guess occasionally you find one you're good at. Also, there are no more bats. We have wiped out all the bats. Only robots left coming to kill us. Oh yeah, come to Papa. Boom! Oh my god! Oh! Oh! Triple kill! Okay, let's, uh, oh my god. Oh god, run! Okay, hold on. We got this. Boom. Boom. Oh! We got him! Oh! Look at those juking skills! Kill that guy, too! Yes! Oh, we're so dead! We're so dead! Fire! Fire! Fire again! Ah, we died. We died to a robot. Damn, we could- we might even be able to get to the black robot. We still have five lives! Holy crap. Jeez, what do I talk- I've run out of stuff to talk about with this game. It's scary, it's atmospheric. Feels like a- it feels like kind of a bit like being in a horror dream, you know? Like a scary dream. Or like being chased through a maze with robots. I don't know. Boom! Oh god! Shielded robot die! Oh man, those guys are tough. Those guys are tough. You really do have to uh, exploit the edges in this game. Like, you really do need to sort of, um, you know, use the edges against the robots, because you kind of have to f duck and weave. Like, you have to fire and then run away. So the shielded robots mean that our strategy of, um, our strategy of sort of controlling the respawn is not going to work anymore, because we can't one-shot them, and so we, we just can't, uh, you know, we just can't cheese them. The way we like. Boom. Boom! Oh! Oh, he got me! Oh, damn. I, I was trying to time out... Um, so when the robots shoot a bullet, they can't fire again until the next bullet uh, sort of lands. And I was trying to time out when the ro white robot has shot a bullet, because then you know you're safe to just, like, walk right in front of them, because they can't shoot again. So, another advanced strategy, if I may... If I may, guys, another advanced strategy that I've figured out in my years of playing Night Stalker here is watch those enemy bullets. And especially if an enemy fires down a long corridor, that is your time to strike because that enemy is basically defenseless until that bullet hits. So if you can get an enemy in this bottom row here to fire, you are golden. Oh, go, go, go. Oh, no, 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 no. What are you doing? I was trying to go further to the left, but I couldn't. Oh, I guess that area is blocked off because that's where robots spawn. I don't know. I do find the controls are a little uh, finicky in terms of moving left and right. Like, you really have to be lined up correctly in these gaps in order to go. Sometimes I'm pressing left or right, and it, like, doesn't let me go. Like, get in there. I'm pressing right. Oh, I'm pressing right. <laughs> I was pressing right there. My guy just kept running down. Damn, maybe we won't get to the the black robots. These these white robots are giving me a hell of a lot of trouble. So I guess um I guess the the bats are just never coming back. They've been replaced permanently with robots. Oh my god, get away from these spiders. Crap, how many hits has this white robot taken? How many hits? Oh god. Oh, okay, not enough to kill him. But we scared him. Boom, die. Oh my god, he's taking no hits. Die. Oh, we got him. We got him and we lived. Okay, run. Run. Oh my god. Oh my god, I can't believe I survived. The hit detection on this is actually, like, spot on. Um, in terms of, like, being forgiving. Boom. Boom. Oh, we iced another white robot. Damn it. We are, we're becoming like a robot killing machine. I feel like we are like a guy who is trying to survive the Terminator apocalypse in Terminator 2. And like at first, we kind of just got lucky and stuff, but it's like the more we fight robots, the better we get at like killing these things. You know, like maybe we're the John Connor. Oh my God. Oh my God. Kill that white robot. 
<laughs> I, that bullet was coming to kill me. There's nothing I could do. All I could do was kill, take a white robot down with me. But yeah, this is this is a good game. There's a lot of like, uh, there's a lot of tactics to it. A lot of shooting and thinking. This would be a fun game to like play with friends and try and outdo one another with your high scores. Or like definitely the fact, even though we're on the same level, like the level's not changing, it does feel, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. Oh crap. It does feel like there's a progression. Like, I feel like I'm playing different levels because the bad guys are getting way more complex. Ah, uh, they got us. Um, I do wish they procedurally generated the maps so that you had different level, actually different levels. Um, and it would be cool if there was maybe more than just the gun item. Although I know I'm asking a lot from an Intellivision, from a 1982 game. Hell, but hell, you have 11 buttons on your controller. Give me one more button. <laughs> Give me a grenade or maybe, um, maybe a mine. That would have been cool. You have mines and you could place them at certain points. Uh, maybe even just like a mine that freezes enemies or something. I don't know. Something that could add a little more tactical depth to like how you uh, control the flow of enemies in the uh, in the maze. Or maybe what about uh, instead of a mine, what about a hologram? You place a hologram of yourself and it lures the robots to that corner. So you could place holograms uh, like maybe just one at a time. Um, and it would uh, draw enemies away. I don't know. I'm just spitballing ideas here. Maybe if they ever make a sequel to this game, they will take my advice uh, into heed. But uh, Night Stalker here, very cool game. I actually really had fun with it today. Um, I think this was even re-released on the PS3 or PSN at one point. So um, yeah, you know, it's, it's dated. Um, you know, is it the kind of game that you're going to hop into and like, you know play a bunch no you know but like if you've never checked this game out before honestly it's kind of kind of interesting kind of cool um it might be a fun game to load up with some buddies one weekend and see if you can outdo one another with uh with high scores i don't know but did any of you guys play night night stalker here and especially it was it was uh, voted on and recommended during the fan extravaganza so um, a number of you must know about this game because you guys voted for it. So I'd love to hear your memories of this game back in the day when you played it. Or maybe there were other tips or tricks that I didn't figure out that you could share uh, that would help other people who are playing, uh, help them get further in the game. Whatever the case may be, let's reminisce about Night Stalker in the comments down below. And uh, also let me know what you think about the uh, Wizard Watch Party. We will definitely be doing that probably in March. If I really get delayed, it'll be April sometime. But uh, again, there'll be an announcement if we do it. But uh, if you think that sounds fun, let me know in the comments about that too. Um, and just if you just want to say hi and say what's going on, you can say that in the comments too. I don't know. Say whatever you want. Guys, it has been fun. I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I will catch you guys in the next video. Until then, my friends, you take care of yourselves and peace. Double kill, triple kill, kill tacular, kill atrocity, Kilimanjaro, kill apocalypse, untouchable, invincible, inconceivable, unfreaking believable.